Oh, good morning, good morning. Oh, have to do that to coordinate the uh, sound on the tape. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Oh my goodness. That's the only proof of God that I've ever really found, which is that if you're waiting to pull out at a T-junction and the road is clear in both directions as far as the horizon, then as soon as you go to pull out, 100 cars come along from both directions. And I think that's not only proof of the existence of God, it's proof that he has a sense of humour. Anyway, what a lovely sunny day. How are you? Look at my hair, look at the length of my hair. It's a big day today. March 29th. Outdoor sports are now permissible, which includes flying. So I've got my flying bag here. And it's going to be a lovely day. And I just hope that the uh, if the the field is dry enough, I might be able to get my plane off the ground. I say my plane, it's my daughter's plane. It just happens to be parked locally. Locally to me. And I look after it. So, I've got no patients booked in today because uh, the, my nurse Lou is having some windows put in. Not personally, you understand, in the house that she rents. So, which is good, it's good for her. It means we get a day off work. But um, we had a, a receptionist start the other day and uh, I had to sort of give her a brief induction into the way we run things at uh, the Angry Dentist. And so it's worth recapping it because it stood the test of time and I think it's an excellent way of managing and running a, a dental surgery or any business for that matter. And I don't hold any, I don't take the credit for developing it, but I do take the credit for implementing it because a lot of people read all these business books, you know, all these and Tony Peters, whatever his name is, all the American business gurus, you know, and uh, and they tell you really what's the best way to run a business and, uh, and then of course everyone goes back and just runs it in the old way like some autocratic uh, Chinese dictator where everything that needs to be done has to be run past the boss. So, the way we run Angry Towers is uh, on a teleocratic basis, which means management by shared purpose. Now, if you're going to manage things by a shared purpose, everybody has to know what the purpose is. What's that? It's a mangy cat. Or is it a fox? No, it's a cat. So... <coughs> So you have to agree on what the shared purpose is. And then from the point of view of shared purpose is what used to be called the mission statement. And everybody used to hate mission statements because they were ridiculously pompous and overcomplicated and observed in the breach. So what you have to have is a, a mission statement or, or what's now called a service level agreement, which is simple and... Uh, easy to follow you know just makes sense within the context of the business and the one we use which is easy to apply to any any business of any type is that we do good quality dentistry we make money and we have fun those are the three if you like objectives and no, no one of them is elevated above the others so for example uh, you can't make good quality dentistry uh, and a loss or you can't uh, make a profit if it means that you don't have fun yeah or you can't have so much fun that you don't make a profit 
We more or less have to try and achieve all three at the same time. If you can achieve all three, then uh, you've, you've, uh, you know, you're, you're working teleocratically. And so everybody really is authorised to do whatever is necessary within their sphere of influence to achieve those three objectives. And what that means is that uh, for a new employee, you have to uh, have a, take them aside and have a quick chat with them and say, look, uh, the way we, we do things is going to be a little, little bit different from what you're used to doing. You know, in your last uh, job, you more or less, uh, you know, you turned up when you were told to, you had the holidays off you were told to, uh, you uh, could only buy stuff once you'd got it authorised, uh, everything you did was somebody else's idea, you know. Um, and that's that's a, a, a bureaucracy. There's there's various levels of uh, control. At the top, there's an autocracy where one person uh, controls everything, and uh, everything has to be run past the boss, and the boss decides what what uh, what happens. I needs to give permission for everything. Okay? Now, unfortunately, that is the model that most dental surgeries run on, uh, where the dentist is the autocrat and everyone else has to ask if they want to take 10 minutes off to go to the toilet. Well, <coughs> once a business gets above a certain size, then uh, it becomes impossible to run everything past the boss because the boss then becomes overwhelmed. Uh, in making decisions and so then you have what's called a bureaucracy and a bureaucracy is um, is sort of management by the book so the boss as far as he can or the organisation tries to write down the rules in every single possible situation where a decision might be necessary and tells you uh, what should be done and so what you do is you refer to the book the and instead of the boss. And the boss writes the book and the book runs the company. And that's a bureaucracy. And of course that's, again, it's a very inefficient way because it's very inflexible. Uh, You know, you can't cover every single eventuality. Things are open to interpretation. uh, And it's very slow to get clarification. Um, And so the next more liberal, if you like, way of running a business is this is teleocracy. And in a teleocracy, you say, look, there is no book as such, but there we, we uh, manage by a set of principles. And the principles are do good quality dentistry, make money and have fun. And really, you've got pretty much full autonomy to do what you like um, uh, within, you know, within the, that set of rules. And that comes as a bit of a culture shock to a lot of people uh, who are used to working in an an autocracy or a bureaucracy. Um, And when you initially tell them, you know, and and usually the best time to tell them is when they come and say to you, um, you know, I can't find the toilet rolls. Do you know where the toilet rolls are? Or something similar, you know, some just something that you, if you if you find yourself as a as a principal, you're sitting there doing the accounts or uh, analysing a CVCT X-ray or something, and and one of the staff comes along and says, "Is it all right if I go home ten minutes early on Friday?" and you get a bit irked, right? That's that first time you get a bit irked. That's the time to have the conversation with them. And basically, it does it does come across as a bit of a you know go away little girl and don't bother me type. Uh, uh, if you're not careful, you have to make it quite clear that okay, uh, you run things a bit differently. They don't know, doesn't matter, and in, in no way are you having to pop at them. But this is basically uh, in this business. One of the guiding principles is that that. Only the dentist only does what only the dentist can do, yeah. And the nurses only do what only the nurses can do, <laughs> and so everyone owns their own sphere in that to that extent. Now, 
you've got obviously you've got a problem where someone that's new doesn't know for example where the toilet rolls are uh, but but if you were like uh, you know started working in a shell garage and you didn't know where where the toilet rolls were you wouldn't ring up the head of shell and say where where's the toilet rolls you know you make an intelligent guess about who would know and you ask the um, you ask that person which might be for example uh, you know the one of the existing nurses or the receptionist or something <coughs> now I'm not saying that uh, nurses should never talk to dentists you know a cat cat can speak to a king but you're <laughs> Uh, you are, as a dentist don't need to be bothered by a load of requests and certainly requests for permission for um, to do things that you know someone who's used to adopting a bit of responsibility and has a bit of autonomy could manage quite well without without involving you and one of the beauties of this system is that you will find that it's a beautiful thing when when something happens your staff make something happen and and you think oh that's a really good thing that's for the benefit of the business and uh, you, you, you know you ha haven't had anything to do with it you weren't asked in fact most of the time possibly you didn't even know it was going to happen but but they uh... but it's been organized you know and it could be anything it could be uh, just uh, ordering in uh, extra supply of masks because they're worried that masks might be coming, uh, running out, being short supply, or, or a visit to the um, uh, to, in, to the theatre in London one evening as a staff uh, outing. You know. Now, what you're going to, you might think, well, you know, if I let my staff go mad, organised, doing whatever the hell they liked, <laughs> what would happen is anarchy. It would be anarchy. You know. And I'd be on the, uh, I'd be on the receiving end of all the checks. I'd have to write the checks for all this. You know, they're going to have a have a great time. But uh, in practice, that's not what actually happens. What actually happens is the staff don't go mad. Uh, they do more or less get the idea of you know what the surgery is about. And a study after study shows that having more control over your working environment produces happier staff you know the more autonomy you give your staff the more likely they are to say you know what a great job this is you know what a great job that was you know when I, I literally I was able to determine for myself how to do my job and as a result I was able to do it much more efficiently and because I could see ways that economies could be made uh, savings could be made in purchases or in uh, procedure and I was free just to implement them straight away you know like uh, 10 minutes later I could make sure that something was changed some some sort of uh, leaflet was rewritten reworded or uh, some procedure was done slightly differently just to save a few quid or a few minutes you know and you get extreme uh, improvements in efficiency uh, once you involve your staff in the running of the practice and you don't try and act as an autocrat. So, just to go over the principles again, all right, because there aren't that many, and that's the whole point is that there aren't that many, so you can remember them. <coughs> Note to self, hope I can remember them. Ah. Oh. Explain to the staff that you have a teleocratic man management approach, which is management by a shared purpose. That it may be a little bit more um, open and flexible than what they're used to, which will be strange and take a bit of getting used to at first. That um, they're going to be more trusted. That what you do is you. Uh, all work towards the same three objectives which is to make money have fun and do good quality dentistry and anything that they do that's in pursuit of all three of those objectives is likely to be 
the right thing to do. That all your um, that only the, den- the dentist only does what only the dentist can do, and the same goes for everybody else. Everybody in an ideal world should only do what only they can do. However, that doesn't mean that you can't ask someone for help. If you've got a, you know, if you don't know something, then by all means elevate that inquiry to someone who who would know the answer but that doesn't always mean go to the dentist just because the dentist probably knows everything in fact after years of teleocratic management I can honestly tell you (coughs) I don't know I don't know where the toilet rolls are kept honestly I don't and it would be odd you know I think it would be odd if I did know because it's not I don't I'm not in charge of making sure that the toilet's got toilet rolls in it okay someone else does that in fact it's not even someone on the dental staff so uh, you know so by all means if you're asked a question answer but then but as I say to sort of use it as a learning opportunity so that the person who's asking the question uh, gets used to the fact that they're not really expected to defer and, and that's not especially if you know the question is of the form can I do something can I is it okay if I blah 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 to which you can always just turn around and say I don't know is it is it okay I don't know what do you think you know and if they say well I can't see a problem with it then, then you say, well, why, why are you asking me if it's okay if you think it's okay then you know and it's working towards the three objectives then then fine then do it you know don't don't slow me down by by having a, thinking that you need to run it past me. You do not need to run it past me. Everything past me. Now the opposite side of that is um, is where something uh, <clears throat> somebody is underperforming, and just to deal deal with the opposite side of that quickly. Um, if somebody's not, uh, you know, doing uh, what you want, then um, really they, they fall into three categories. So um, the first category is that they just haven't been trained, and uh, they haven't been. Uh, or, or no, the first category really they don't know what they're supposed to do, or they didn't know that they were supposed to do something. You know. <coughs> And that's usually, that's just very technical. That you can just say, you know, if someone is late in the morning, you, you have to say to them, look, it's part of our objective is to, uh, oh, that's a berm. A berm. Uh, you know, is, is to turn up in time to see the patients. That's part of our uh, making money, you know. We have to um, work certain surgery hours. And it affects other people's uh, fun if they happen to cover for you, etc., etc. So that's just a straightforward deficit of knowledge. Um, then, secondly, you get to the point where someone does know what they're supposed to do, but they they don't do it because they're not capable of doing it because they're not um, they haven't been trained to do it. They don't have the equipment to do it. In other words, it's something they want to do it. They know what to do. They want to do it, but they're being prevented by some sort of uh, external factor Uh, and it may be that they haven't had the training or it may be that they don't um, intellectually they're not uh, capable of doing it (coughs) oh dear me so I need a drink in the car I'll have to bring myself a flask So then, obviously, if they just need the training, the answer is to give them the training. If it seems that they're not up to the job, you know, it's a, I don't know, an intellectual job and they're not not adequate to the job intellectually, then obviously you have to think about reassigning them or, or assigning someone else to the job. That is a little bit more tricky. But it's not insuperable. And then the last um, category is someone who knows exactly what they they're supposed to be doing and they are capable of doing it and then uh, but they don't uh, but they don't do it 
and that's because they're they're willfully not doing it. They've decided that they don't agree <laughs> that they should have to do it. And the classic example of that, which was part of the demise of our existing receptionist, was uh, being on Facebook all day and uh, not devoting her working hours to the uh, teleocratic principles. And she, she decided that uh, uh, she, she felt that it was important, more important for her to be on Facebook than it was for her to be working towards the shared objectives. Um, and so under those circumstances, you have to let the person go. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't really have a disagreement about what the core business is. I mean, I mean, either you're a dental surgery or you're just a, or you're an internet cafe, uh, you know. <laughs> and that's the way, as a business owner, that's the one thing you do have the right to say what the business is, you know. <laughs> Whether you, even if you pivot halfway through and turn uh, from a dental surgery into a, a Bitcoin uh, a Bitcoin uh, investment fund then you, you it's your business and it's the business from which you expect to make a profit and the business can be whatever the business you, is it's not your staff's job to, uh, to define your business activity so anyway there we go so we've got Teleocracy, service level agreements, how to uh, have a chat with staff and explain it to them, why it's a better idea, and uh, also how to uh, troubleshoot staff who don't want to go along with the general uh, way of doing things, you know. Oh, it's a nice day today. I might take the camera in the... Uh, in the plane, I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Always worries me those blokes on the gate there. Oh, I used to think that they were drug dealers. Because this is a school. But, um, not that you think, I mean, it's more like an open prison than a school, as such, but. But then someone said to me they're probably teachers, you know. They're probably keeping an eye on who's coming in on the gate. So, and I suppose that's just what they're doing. Although, if they're the teachers, aren't they? I'll be interested to see what the pupils look like. Lovely. All right, then. Nice to talk to you. Hope that was helpful. Talk to you soon. Bye.